So in terms of specific symptoms, other than the deformities that acromegaly um, causes, we look at sweating. There shouldn't be a reason for someone to start sweating more than usual when they are middle-aged um, or elderly um, adults. We also like to um, think of um, physical signs. For example, we shake the patient's hand when we, uh, when we see them in the office. So you can feel the, the pad that is actually thicker in patients with acromegaly compared to patients who don't have acromegaly. We like to look at old pictures because especially for patients that we see for the first time, it, it might not be easy to tell what kind of changes occurred. So those would be the main um, things that, that are specific besides what we see in terms of clear deformities. When you asked me about other um, physicians or practitioners involved in the patient's care, we actually looked at this with, with our study at Emory, where, where do patients come from? Which physicians refer them? Before the endocrinologist gets involved, who is involved? And the one interesting um, observation is that for women, especially those who are young, still in their fertility years. For women, gynecologists play an important role, or primary care physicians, if, if that's who's doing the usual uh, women's health checkups. What acromegaly causes in young women is irregular periods. Sometimes they go away completely, so it's amenorrhea, and um, sometimes even though the periods stay uh, normal, the problem is infertility. And while this tends to happen in both women and men, the infertility, I think women are more likely to, to seek attention for this from, from a gynecologist or a reproductive endocrinologist. So we've had quite a few referrals from from these women who were actually seeking at medical attention for years before, and they were um, diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome, PCOS. Now, PCOS is a lot more common in general population than acromegaly is. And PCOS has a wide, it's more like a syndrome. There are several criteria that could put one in the PCOS category, and many of those are clinical criteria. So one could easily miss acromegaly in a, in a patient who is otherwise being told that they have uh, PCOS. So that's where I would like to emphasize early differential diagnosis. In, um, in women with oligomenorrhea, amenorrhea, or infertility. The dentists definitely um, also play a role because why would the teeth become more apart or, or shift? There are situations when, when this is expected um, with the dental work and removal of teeth. But many times, um, I think, if that's accompanied by prognatism or the lower jaw moving forward, that should raise an alarm um, sign for something medical going on, maybe a tumor that, that secretes too much growth hormone.